Hello and welcome to Talk with Dr. Agnes. According to Asthma Canada, asthma affects more than 3.8 million Canadians, including 850,000 children under the age of 14. In Canada alone, asthma is the third most common chronic disease. Every day, over 300 Canadians are diagnosed with asthma, and tragically, every year, an estimated 250 Canadians die from an asthma attack. Join me as I discuss this further in this forthcoming episode. Stay tuned. Asthma is a chronic respiratory condition that affects the airways, which are the tubes that carry air in and out of the lungs. People with asthma experience inflammation and narrowing of the airways, making it difficult for them to breathe. Common symptoms of asthma, which may vary in severity from mild to severe and can occur intermittently, or persistently include wheezing, a whistling sound produced during breathing due to narrowed airways, shortness of breath, feeling out of breath or unable to catch full breath, chest tightness, a sensation of pressure or constriction in the chest, coughing, often worse at night or early in the morning and may be accompanied by phlegm production. Difficulty sleeping, asthma symptoms can affect sleep patterns as well as increase mucus production and being unable to take part in physical activities without breathing difficulty. A trigger is anything that irritates your airways and asthma triggers can vary from person to person. Hence, asthma is caused by two types of triggers one is allergic trigger, which causes allergic reactions. For example, things like dust mites, pollens, molds, pet dander. Non-allergic triggers are usually irritants and they include things like um, smoke, weather conditions like cold air, certain air pollutants, intense emotions. Other triggers include respiratory infections, like colds, flu, and other respiratory infections that can worsen asthma symptoms. Exercise, like physical activity, can trigger um, asthma symptoms, especially in some individuals. Why do people get asthma? According to allergy.ca, research has yet to show a definitive cause of asthma. However, Researchers have determined several risk factors that can lead to asthma development, such as family history and genetics. Children of mothers with asthma are three times more likely to suffer from asthma and two and a half times more likely if the father has asthma. Allergies, people are more likely to have asthma if they have certain types of allergies, such ones which can affect the eyes and the nose. However, not everyone who has allergies will get asthma, and not everyone who has asthma is affected by allergies. Respiratory allergies and some types of asthma are related to an antibody called immunoglobulin E, IgE which the immune system produces in response to allergens. To protect the body, the IgE causes allergic reactions that can affect the eyes, the nose, the throat, lungs, and our skin. Prematurity, premature birth. Children born before 37 weeks are at increased risk of developing asthma later in life. Babies or small children may be at risk of developing asthma in life if they have had certain lung conditions at a very early age. Likewise, 
occupational exposures as well. There are over 200 substances, including gases, which can predispose us um, to asthma. Hormones. Um, women can develop adult onset asthma during or after menopause. Environment air quality. Um, smoking, exhaust fumes, and airborne particulate matter can be linked to causing asthma. Obesity, extra weight around the chest may squeeze the lungs and make it difficult to inhale. Fat tissue produces inflammatory substances that might influence the lungs and affect asthma. Now let's talk about management of asthma here. There is currently no cure for asthma, but with proper treatment, it can be managed. Diagnosis of asthma may involve physical examination, lung function testing, medical and family history may all support a diagnosis of asthma. The management of asthma involves a combination of medication, lifestyle modification and monitoring to control symptoms, prevent exacerbations and maintain good lung function as well as keeping up to date with your vaccines such as COVID vaccines, pneumonia shots and flu shots. Here are some of the key aspects of asthma management. One is medication. There are usually two main types of medication used in asthma management. One is the controller medications or preventer. These medications are usually taken regularly to control inflammation and prevent symptoms. And they include inhaled corticosteroids or long acting puffers to help to control your asthma. The second type of inhaler is rescue medications. They are quick relief medications usually used during asthma attacks or when symptoms occur. Blue inhalers called Ventolin and they help to relax the airway muscles, open up the airways. However, if you need to take it more than twice per week, excluding before exercise, your asthma is not well controlled and you should speak with your family doctor. During exacerbations, we sometimes give oral steroids as well, just to help to you know, calm down the inflammation and you may need a nebulizer as well, okay? Action, um, asthma action plan. You might need to work with your healthcare provider to develop a personalized asthma action plan. This asthma, uh, this plan outlines your daily medication regime, identifies triggers and provides instructions on adjusting medications based on your symptom severity. It also defines when to seek emergency care. Avoiding triggers is also important. Identifying and avoid triggers that worsen your asthma symptoms. Certain triggers include allergies like dust mite, which I already mentioned before, pollen, um, pet danders, irritants like smoke, strong odors, respiratory infections, exercise and weather conditions. Taking steps to minimize exposures to your triggers can help reduce asthma symptoms. Lifestyle modifications include um, adopting a healthy lifestyle which can contribute to better asthma management. Maintain a balanced diet, exercise regularly and manage your stress levels. It's also essential to avoid smoking and exposure to secondhand smoke. And if you're looking to quit smoking, Make a quit plan and with and because a quit plan will increase your chances of quitting smoking. And you can also watch my COPD quit smoking video to learn ways on how to get started. Okay. Regular follow-up includes scheduled uh, regular checkups with your healthcare provider to assess your asthma control, adjust your medications if necessary, and address any concerns or questions you may have. Education and self-management is also important. Learn about asthma, 
learn how to manage it effectively, understand your medications, the potential side effects and proper use. For example, inhaler technique is essential towards your management and must be taken using the correct technique. And in some cases, with a spacer to help deliver the medication into the airways more effectively. Also, educate yourself on recognizing early warning signs of an asthma attack and what steps to take. Empower yourself with the knowledge to make informed decisions about your asthma management. Remember, asthma management is individualized and the specific treatment may vary based on the severity of your symptoms as well as individual needs. Again, that's going back to you know, speaking with your healthcare provider to develop an asthma plan. And this plan um, outlines the steps to manage asthma symptoms, including the use of rescue inhalers um, during flare-ups and also the use of um, controller medications to prevent symptoms and reduce inflammation. A healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. They can evaluate your symptoms refer you for lung function tests and provide guidance on managing your condition effectively. I hope today's topic was useful and engaging. As usual, I will leave links to useful resources in the description box. Please post your feedback and comment below and kindly follow Talk with Dr. Agnes on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can stay connected by receiving notifications when new videos are uploaded. Like and share this video with someone you care about and I look forward to connecting with you. Now for general inquiries about my web series or you would like to connect a partner with me regarding health promotion concepts, please contact us via email talkwithdragnes at gmail.com. Until then, continue to strive to become a healthier version of yourself and I'll see you soon.